Hello, this is Malorian and this is the Orc Tactical Team. And what we're going to be talking about today is playing the comp system. So what that means is that whenever you go into a tournament, usually there's points talking about uh, how your army has to be, the deductions you might take, and this goes all the way across from restrictions on your lists, uh, there could be just uh, penalties that you take whenever something happens. Then of course there's the, the paint and then there's also the sportsmanship and all these things will go together with your wins or losses in order to get your your overall score. So if you're a person that's going in for the overall best and not for the top general, <clears throat> this is something you have to really keep in mind. And when it comes down to it, what it really is is taking a look at the package and it's not a simple thing of just running in and just figuring that you'll be nice and, and off you go. You have to really look at the math of these different packages. Uh, and some of them, even though it's a penalty, it's worth taking. But So let's get into this. So the very first thing you should be looking at whenever you go into a tournament that has a comp package is the restriction. So this is something where it says, you know what, your units can only be this big, uh, they can only have this many points inside a unit, and really that's the first thing you have to look at because there's no way around it. It's not like you take a penalty, the penalty is you don't get the play. So these are very serious things you have to look at. Now depending on what these are, it's automatically going to steer you one way or the other. Now unfortunately for tournament organizers, you always want to be trying to bring these things in to try and stop the nastiest list, but you can't really stop the nastiest list because there's always another way around it. If you go, and I just had a person that was telling me about it, their tournament they're going to, Savage Orc Biggins are going to be maxed out at 28. You know, you got to get at your 28, two characters, that's the biggest you can go. And that's because they're really worried about the Savage Orc Biggins. And that's all well and good, but all that means for an Orc player is, okay, I'm not probably going to go with the Savage Orc Biggin way. I'm probably now just going to go and, all right, let's go and go with our Black Orcs, our Trolls, our Squig Herd Hordes. And then when he goes to core, then okay, we'll just take Night Goblins that'll really pile things up, or maybe go to the next best thing and go to two hand weapon regular orcs that are biggins. So this is where you have to kind of first look at it because that's obviously going to be forcing you which way you're going to go. The next thing to look at is the penalties. So these are something where you can take, but you're going to be taking a hit on it. Now, the big thing here is that this is just a penalty and whenever there's a penalty there's always a balance of whether it's worth it or not. So for example, maybe in my comp if I take a special character, boom, that's going to be a minus one. A minus one, that sounds really bad. Now if you look at it though, if let's say your comp is five points out of a total of a hundred you could be getting for the entire tournament, losing one point isn't that big of a deal. And let's say you're a really top high elf player and you're really good at techless. Well, if taking techless is going to be meaning that you're going to be scoring more massacres down the line, well, that can make up more than that one point very easily. So you definitely have to be looking at this. Whereas on the other way, let's say that for each one, you know, your comp score is out of five, uh, that's one of them, and that's going to be multiplied by the points that you get for every game all of a sudden this is a bigger deal and something you really have to pay attention to. So make sure you run the numbers, run the math, and this stuff can be very important. Now the next thing you can be looking at is also your sportsmanship. Now sportsmanship seems to be a simple thing, right? I'm just going to go to the tournament, I'm going to be nice, I'll get lots of uh, good sportsmanship marks and everybody's going to love me. But unfortunately, sportsmanship marks always really overlap with comp marks. Is this something that always happens? I can come in there and I can be the nicest guy, but if I just slammed your face and destroyed you with the toughest list, I'm going to take a hit in sportsmanship. It's just psychology. That's going to happen. And so you really have to try and work in how I'm going to be doing this now. And of course, the first thing you have to look at is what's your meta and what's your own personal skill level in pretending to be nice. Because really, if you are going in there and crushing people's faces in, you're probably not the nicest guy. You know, so look at your own skill level. Can I go in there and try and make this fun? And it's not just a thing of acting and being a person that's always trying to be talking to the person and trying to make them feel nice. It can also be your skill level as a general so that I could have a list that's going to absolutely crush you. But if I'm against a guy that I don't really need to be going full force punch in the face, I can go 60% and still beat you. Be the type of person that can hold back and say like, oh no, look, I messed up and now my trolls are stuck way back here. I guess I'm only going to have to fight you with these guys and then laugh it off and know that 
you still have the skill level to beat them with that portion of your army and then that's not going to affect your sportsmanship at the end because they thought oh you know it was a fun game look how funny that was you didn't even get all your guys so that's a, a big thing there the next thing is also going into your list and so again this is where I said sportsmanship really can go to comp and the biggest thing you want to look at is the guys that people feel are the worst so again if you're going to something that has a really high effect for sportsmanship marks you might want to go and start all of a sudden edge away from the things like the Savage Orc Biggins, like the Black Orcs that everybody knows is a very hard unit and start going for something instead that is actually really strong but most people don't know about it. So for my part that would be the Squeak Herds where Squeak Herds are amazing but because of the cost to put together this big metal unit you don't see a lot of them so when they cop up on the field people think this is great man I've never seen this before and even though I went and smashed their face you're gonna get higher marks and this could not be just a change in units going from Savage Orc Biggins or Black Orcs to uh, a squeak herd this could also go with completely changing your tactics so instead of taking a list that's all about big blocks of guys go smash your face okay I'm gonna now mix up a list to be another competitive one that you don't usually see so switching over to beastmen instead of having one where it's just a whole bunch of best of gores and stuff like this tons of chariots tons and tons of chariots smash 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 people will never see it before and really just the the fact that you're getting smashed with chairs, guys will feel better about it because they've never seen it before. Whereas the poor is like, oh yeah, here we go again, I'm going to be smashed by steam tanks. It's amazing how this really changes things. So you have to really keep that into mind about how your sportsmanship is going to be handling your comp, which will go into your overall comp for best overall. The next thing you have to look at is your painting. And even though it'd be great to follow of us for amazing painters, that's just really not the case. And the interesting thing here is that your painting score isn't always based off how good of a painter you are. Now, let's start off with the easier part. If you have a unit that you know is really powerful but painted poorly, you might want to go with something else that's painted better. So, again, if, if I have my big horde of Savage Orc Biggins, my big horde of Black Orcs, both of them are really powerful, but my Black Orcs were done a long time ago, they're really crappy, I only have points for the one, guess what, I'm going with the Savage Orc Biggins. Now, like I said, it's not always about your painting. As those have been seeing judged uh, com uh, competitions and things before, you also know that the... Uh, Conversions are also a massive part of your painting score. If you look at something and it's a crazy conversion, it looks better to you. And all of a sudden you're just going to be getting better painting marks. You know, you can look at two different giants. One's been heavily converted and the other one has been just the basic build. Now, the heavily converted one could be just tabletop painting, right? Nothing fancy. And the one that's out of the box has all the highlights and all that great things. Well, you'd be surprised to see that the converted one gets a lot higher marks than this one that's painted to a higher skill level. So again, looking at your army and say, what's actually converted up? What's actually going to be looking interesting? And is this going to be giving me enough more points that it's worth not taking a unit I'm better, I'm better with? And in all these cases, it's really just coming back to the math. Look at what it's worth in the tournament. Now, finally, one of the things I want to talk about for comp that makes it very difficult is the whole council idea. So what happens in council comp is where you submit your list, they give it a rating, and that's what happens. It, it's done. And really going in, you have no idea what their list is going to be, what their biases might be, and so it's really hard to go into it. Well, of course, the first thing you can look at is what's the math behind this. Again, if the comp score is going to be worth very little, screw it. Go with your best, best list, go in and smash face. If it's greater, then all of a sudden you have to be more careful. Now, another thing you can look at again is the meta going in. Are a lot of people going to be taking top lists? Because if everybody's taking top lists and you just take one that's strong but a little bit lower, you're going to get really good comp scores. If you're going into an area where everybody t plays fluffy lists and you take even just like a low medium build, all of a sudden you're still at the top. 
So you have to kind of be looking at where you're going. And, and really, if you're a person that travels around, you know, you can be just phoning the stores there. Say, you know what, what's really the, how tough are people usually playing there? Is it usually like the really tough builds? And you might even have to ask a question because it could be the store owner doesn't know. Uh, they could be saying, yeah, man, yeah, guys take really strong builds here. And you ask, oh, well, what is that? Oh, well, you know, you got the guys that are taking uh, big, long lines of, uh, of chosen, you know, five wide and, and 50 deep. It's crazy. And you go like, well, that's stupid. I don't care about, what's, about that whatsoever. So really make sure you know that level going in and then adjust your uh, a list accordingly. I'd say the last thing you really have to look at for your comp then at the very end of the day is what are you trying to get out of the tournament? You know, you could be going in there and doing this math and all this stuff, but in the end of the day, you have to decide what you're trying to get out of it. If you're a person going into a tournament and you know what, I made up this new Mazda Mondi conversion and that's all I'm there for. Ignore those comp scores, off you go. If, if you're a person that's going in, you know what, I'm just going to go in there for best general. Obviously, again, if you're going to take all these overall comp scores uh, for all these things, they'll go to your overall, but not for general, well, then screw them. Make sure you really prioritize and understand that math. And then, of course, if you're a person that's not trying to win something anyway, screw it. Don't look at it whatsoever. So there you go, uh, some helpful hints of how to kind of play the comp systems. And really, whenever you see a comp system, there's always a way to play it. So hope that helps you, and thanks for watching. Bye.